Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. We are welcomed once again by the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And once again, Noah, we have a great case study given to us by our good friends at a soda ash company. They saved three over three hundred and thirteen thousand dollars. Wow, that now that's justification. That is justification. I think we just ran a tip on this a couple weeks ago. It was a tip of the week and a, and, a, and a good one because it's important that we do justify to, to really to justify having the technology and doing our jobs right. Exactly. So let's look at the nameplate information. We have a 4160 volt, 350 horsepower, 94 and a half percent efficient four pole motor. Motor key is going through frequent starts and stops. Tell us why the importance of that factor. It is important because the, the starting and stopping of a motor is really one of the more stressful times that a, in a motor's you know, uh, life cycle. Uh, and if that happens a lot, then the rotor is undergoing severe amounts of torque, very high current, a lot of thermal expansion and contraction. Uh, so these are kind of things that you only, you know, ideally, you don't do it very often, but in certain applications it's required. Right. So let's take a look. Uh, they were having some vibration issues. They, they had seen it on vibration and they just recently picked up our technology and did current signature analysis and lo and behold, what do they see here, Noah? Wow, these are some very high amplitudes. Uh, pull pass frequency, this is as the rotor and the stator are passing each other. Uh, it creates a, a modulation in current and it is picked up very easily by our current signal. Often correlated with vibration, although a lot of times it's, you know, you'll get intermittent vibration based on loading, but the current is the clear Ob obvious indicator to rotor bar health. And as you see here, we have blue, yellow, red lines. What does that? We give those observed caution and alarm levels. So as it's passing through your observed caution, we throw the flag up and say, hey, let's start to trend this. Uh, in the scenario we have here, this has gone you know, well beyond alarm and, and really needs an immediate action. So we need to look at this pretty quick. So there's some other tests. We also looked at the fifth harmonic on this and really this does correlate quite well with the pole pass frequency. Right, and as long as it's a four pole or, or, or higher you know, uh, motor, the, the swirl effect as this is called is a great uh, uh, you know, additional tool to confirm rotor bars. There are loads that can create pole pass, but the swirl effect is not one. And so this can confirm a magnetic rotor related versus just a load related anomaly. Okay, so that was our fifth harmonic look at this. We did a rotor influence check. Now the motor's secured when we do this and we're rotating the shaft every uh, five degree increments and we're taking inductance measurements. What is this telling us? I love to see these rotor influence checks. Very often we don't get them. Uh, someone has to turn the rotor to acquire these inductance readings. What, the, what this allows us to do is strip away power and purely look at the magnetics between the rotor and the stator. And this is, is basically, uh, you know, with a sign across it saying we have rotor anomalies and even a little bit of eccentricity as a result of the peak-to-peak -peak variance uh, from, you know, throughout the course of the test. So we are correlating online, offline data that gives us a little better security or better feeling when we say, hey, we need to pull this motor. Right, our tech support likes to see three indicators. We've seen pull pass amplitudes, swirl effect, and now a rotor influence check. Correct. And look at this. Here's a fourth one. Demodulation online. Yeah, demod is, is one of my favorite because it allows a lot of mechanical, uh, you know, detail information. Uh, and in this situation, we're dealing with a fan, so we can we can track blade pass and stuff as well as the rotor related. And generally, we start to become concerned at about 0.3. I think our amplitudes here are well above that, and uh, and as a result, you know, I think up in 0.6, 0 0.7, approaching one, we have to get involved with this right away. All right. So the next step is to send it to the repair facility and pull the rotor and boy, ouch. That, I guess you don't even have to. Don't uh, have to do a lot more testing after that. Uh, six or a thousand words, right. And that's three very, very uh, openly cracked bars. You know, it's a closed bar design and, uh, and all that's important, as you can see here on the opposite side. And something, I don't know if it's easily seen, but I, I notice there's a lot of weights back there behind the bars. So what does that mean? Why are we concerned about that excess weight? If, if ever in a situation where you see this type of weight added to a location to try to balance mechanically the rotor, this is unfortunately a situation where someone's trying to apply mechanical balance techniques 
to an electromagnetic imbalance, and it's just not going to it's not going to be a, a, a success. It may temporarily make the motor vibrate less and 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 the balance come into line, but guess what's not going to change? The the bars aren't going to heal. Uh, the current's going to continue to 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 cause more problems, and the imbalance is going to change. And so it it just a, it's a it's an ongoing process. Okay, so what we always like to do is once we've repaired it, we want to take another test on this asset to verify that the repair was done complete. And once it's in the in the uh, circuit again, everything is working properly. This shows that. Yeah, this is as good. This is the best verification validation you can ask for. We're until. up here. And now we're way down. Well under the observed level. And if you remember the fifth harmonic look at it, we had actual activity at all the three peaks over here to the left of the fifth harmonic. Now we're down in the in the dirt. That's so what you want to see. Absolutely. So cost savings, it's always important, right? New motor to replace would have been sixty one thousand dollars. That's pricey. Yeah. For you know that's a four thousand volt motor. Uh, it's the price people pay. The, since we knew it was just the rotor, we were we were able to just replace that and have a savings, uh, realized savings of thirty three thousand one hundred and forty dollars. That's, that's cutting it in half. Yeah, that's a big deal. And also, by not having this motor fail during a peak production or during any type of production event, we were able to save an additional two hundred eighty thousand dollars, making it a grand total of over three hundred thirteen thousand dollars in cost savings. Mm, that's justification again. That is justification. Now, getting back to, we saw that the motor had some weights associated with it. With this new rotor going in and all of the stops and starts on this asset, they're talking about a variable frequency drive, putting it on there to lessen the blows of the starts and stops. Is that a good idea? It's a very good idea, especially in these applications requiring this many starts and stops. A variable frequency drive is going to allow a, a reduced torque on the startup. Uh, not to mention they can reduce the frequency of the motor and, and reduce the flow of air required rather than actually shutting the entire motor down. Slowing down rather than stopping, basically. Well, as always, we thank you for your time. And if you have any suggestions or some case studies you'd like to share with us, please feel free to contact us. You can come to our website, send us an email, or give us a phone call. Once again, thank you and have a great day.